that's like always the opposite. Yeah, we we drive on the <laughs> other side. It's everything is the on the on the other side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The water goes down the toilet the opposite direction. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all of that, all that good stuff. Right on. All right. Well, uh, yeah, this is uh, Pablo. Like I mentioned, everyone, um, I'm going to go through a couple of things here, the basics of the webinar, and we're going to turn it over to Pablo in a moment here for a pose tools live demo uh, with uh, character creator and ZBrush. Uh, we're going to get some, get to that in just a moment here. That's going to be the interesting stuff. Um, but before we do, uh, as always, we are sending out a survey for this webinar. So if you guys have any feedback you want to add uh, for us, uh, fill that survey. We'll send that to you via email and you get the 10% discount in the content store when you fill out that survey, as always. And we are live streaming this on YouTube and recording it on YouTube as well. Um, but just be aware, we won't be answering questions on YouTube. So if you want to ask questions, um, please join the uh, Zoom webinar. And we have a Q&A section in Zoom that we'll be answering your questions from there. And we'd be more than happy to do that after uh, Pablo's live demo here in just a moment. Um, I'm going to share my screen really quick and uh, show you a couple of uh, demo things here. And then I'm going to hand it over to Pablo, who will kind of introduce himself, um, a couple of important links um, that uh, um, regarding his background as an artist and uh, some uh, really good learning websites you can check out there. We'll talk about more of that in just a moment here. Um, but I'm just going to share my screen really quick. Hopefully I'm sharing the right screen. All right. So hope you guys should be able to see um, the selected 2D and 3D motion um, page here. So this is from the content store. So this is a current promotion we have going on right now. Um, some 2D and 3D motions. Again, you can use Motion Link um, to transfer 3D motions to 2D software, Cartoon Animator as well. That's a whole nother can of worms. Um, but this is the special we have going on right now. I'm going to throw a couple of these links into the chat window. And I'm also going to do that for Pablo's links coming up here in just a moment. Um, so take advantage of this. It's only on for a little while here um, to get some uh, beef up your motion library there. Uh, and then we'll move on to this one here, which is we'll just see, oop, too many links on the top here. All right. And a 3D actor a promotion we have going on right now as well here. So, uh, so check out the 3D actor pricing. Right now it's on discount. And uh, this is the top selling stuff for the month. And it's on discount right now. So I'll throw that in the chat window for you as well. Again, just uh, take a look at this on your own time. I don't want to waste too much time promoting it and talking about all this stuff. Oh, I am sending it to only one person. All right. To make sure I'm sending this to everyone here. All right. Let's try the other one again here. I closed it. Oops. This should be the one. Nope, that's my mail. <laughs> All right. Um, hopefully the Reillusion team can send the uh, previous link that I sent because it's not coming up. But the trust yeah, the I, I can see. <laughs> I can see two. Yeah, I can see oh, two so you, links. You can see this there. one now. Okay. Oh, now it popped yeah. up. Okay. I'm not sure there if it's the, the one that... Uh, let me just double check. Yeah, there was only the two ones. I sent the previous ones yeah. to just the hosts. So, yeah, no, I, I got it as well. All right. Apologies for that, guys. And uh, so that's the 3D actor stuff right there. Um, the 2D selected uh, motions, 2D and 3D motions, uh, rather. And that's really about all I have to uh, talk to you about for promotion today. If you're a Cartoon Animator user, we have the uh, uh, Cartoon Animator at Work um, competition going on, which you can check out as well. But I know everyone here is mostly for 3D. So let's just continue on to this uh, really quick look at the outline. If you're already signed up for this webinar, You've probably already taken a look at this web line or web line outline this web outline <laughs> here and uh pablo will be explaining a lot more about a lot, a lot more about it later so uh this is all the stuff we're going to learn about and uh just the power of the um the pose tools uh, in the zbrush pipeline um pablo's been around for a long time with zbrush basically all i can do is mold some sort of blob or something like that <laughs> um so <laughs> we'll take we'll take the tips from him and uh, I think, yeah, Pablo, I'll just go ahead and uh, send it over to you then. And uh, you can sh share your screen if you can. And uh, we'll move on um, from there. And I'll yeah, absolutely. Links. Yeah, why don't you introduce yourself here? Uh, hang on. Let me just go ahead and share my screen then. Uh, I'm going to stop yours, though. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I can. Do I have to stop mine? I'll stop mine anyways. Are you able to share there? Okay, yeah. Yep. Let's Let me know when you can go. see it. Yep, all good. All right. Awesome. So um, hang on. First, let me just go ahead and bring in the chat and questions just to help them in here. 
Um, cool. So uh, for those who don't know me, this is kind of like the type of work that I'm do uh, that I'm that I'm doing at the moment. Um, and kind of like the the themes and um, you know type of I would say the the style that I try that I try to create or that I tend to gravitate towards. Uh, it's all kind of like uh, sci-fi stuff, uh, characters, uh, creatures. So there's a bunch of different. Um, you know, variations, not only in style, but also in the type of work that I do. So I just wanted to show you kind of like a, a brief uh, overview of the type of work that I do um, so that you are aware of, you know, how I might be able to help you. So if you're interested in environments and things like that, um, you know, even though I do certain things that have to do with environment, it's not my forte or like hard surface stuff. Uh, yeah, I try to do more like creatures and fantasy and sci-fi and that sort of things. Um, but yeah, so um, just wanted to show you a little bit of my work so that uh, you are aware of the type of things that I do in case um, you haven't seen this before. Um, also, as um, Kai mentioned, I do have a few resources that, um, that are available. I'm not going to spend too much time on that because uh, I can see that some of you guys here are actually from the Discord community that I have. Um, so welcome, everyone. And I see some some of the the Spanish speak yeah, Spanish speaking um, friends here. So hola a todos. Um, I'm gonna just going to show you the, the three concept artists website. This is my, um, my own academy. So I have a lot of in-depth courses uh, about ZBrush mainly, but other things as well. So you can just go ahead and, and browse through the courses link in here. Uh, here is also where I have the extra mile, which is the, the biggest course. It's a, it's a massive program that I have. Uh, it's currently closed at the moment. I'm redoing the whole thing, but it's going to be available uh, hopefully very soon uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, and it's going to be pretty big. So um, if you're interested, you can also scroll down all the way to the bottom uh, and, I, and you can join the the newsletter uh, and just try, try to send a newsletter every you know every week or so uh, so you can get like tips and tricks and uh, in fact some of the stuff that i'm going to show you today with reolution i've covered already in some of the newsletters so that's basically what you can um keep up to date with you know any news from this stuff uh the zbrush guides in case you haven't seen it is a, a resource dedicated entirely to zbrush but again i cover all the tutorials and other things things. Uh, these are like 99% you know, free tutorials, resources that you can grab. Um, just feel free to navigate through the, all of these. Um, you also can get um, you know, these news from here, um, from this whatever whatever is happening. Uh, like in this case, today is the, the posting characters in Zero is the easy way. You can just go ahead and grab that, uh, click here, and then you see all the information in there as well. And finally, I have the 3D snippets, which is kind of like a Patreon uh, that I run. And I call it the 3D snippets because it is a uh, very, very small snippet project uh, condensed in one month. So I try to complete one project in a month or so. Um, and every month is something different. And I uh, let whoever is subscribed uh, kind of like dictate what the the topic is going to be so we we try different tools it's kind of like um like an exper like an experiment really so i just uh, try new things um in fact one of these ones is uh, let me just, just go back a bit uh yep with reallusion so again um i try to you know try different poses or sorry <laughs> try different tools in this case to create the poses so um all of that is in there um you can just go in there and you know if you subscribe um, all the information is in there. Like I said, it's kind of like a Patreon, so you get updates every now and again. And finally, the Zero's Guide Store, which is something that you can just access uh, from the resources. You can just go to the resources here. And these are all the resources. You can do the same thing by going to zero'sguides.store. Um, sorry, not this one. Um, and then you can grab a bunch of tools and, and brushes that I'm just going to show you this one because I might refer to these brushes and these tools during the, the content of this webinar. So just so you know where to grab them if you're interested. And finally, uh, one thing that I just want to mention, my YouTube channel, you can just go ahead and subscribe and also get um, notifications when there is new tutorials. And uh, I just want to mention one in a specific. Uh, so I'm going to share this link in the chat here uh, because you can go ahead and it's a tutorial about uh, customizing your UI in ZBrush, but you can just go ahead and open up the description here and you can download the uh, my custom UI that I have in ZBrush. And you know that probably is going to be a lot easier to follow along uh, with this kind of like webinar if you have that UI. Uh, but if not, don't worry, I'm going to mention everything that I cover uh, or everything that I'm going to use in um, in ZBrush. Uh, with, yeah, so that's it. <laughs> with that out of the way, let's go ahead and uh, jump into the webinar. I don't know if uh, so far, is there any questions or anything that uh, you want to cover before I um, yeah I start with the, with the content or we're all good to go? I just wanted to mention to everyone that I put all, links for all of those uh, windows in the in the chat window. Um, all those pages in the chat window for you so you can check them out whenever you want as well. And I awesome. think Kyle, you're, you're still sending to hosts and panelists only. So I just 
uh, pasted mm -hmm. your link again. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> no worries. On. Let me just change that. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that that was an option. That's good. All righty. So, um, yeah, so here we are in ZBrush. This is my custom UI. I just customized the colors to make it more a uh, Reolution type of um, vibe, but, you know, it's uh, it's just the colors. Um, and if you haven't used ZBrush in the past, this is going to be a little bit uh, overwhelming because it has lots of different tools. Uh, but I assume that most of you have at least basic knowledge on, on ZBrush. Um, and I, like I said, I'm going to mention wherever I use a specific uh, tool, I'm going to mention where you can find it in the vanilla or, or simple version of ZBrush. Um, and by the way, I'm using ZBrush 2022.0.5, but any tool that I'm going to show you, it works in the latest versions of ZBrush as well. Uh, I just decided to go with 2022 because I believe uh, most people are still in this um, version of ZBrush. So I might as well cover that um, as well. All righty. And just for fun, just to start things off, let me just show you what we're going to be working on today. So here is this uh, version of my Spider-Man. Um, it's just a, you know, a take on the Spider-Man from the across the, the multiverse, um, my Morales, which I think is really cool. Um, and by the way, I'm using, um, I won't be able to show you, but I'm using a 3D connection um, space mouse. So that's why I can just sort of like move a little bit more freely like so. Um, and the same thing for Silver. So just a couple of admin stuff just to, so you know what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of like what I'm going to be showing you, um, how I got to this point where I have a fully fleshed character, um, even though it's very sketchy. Uh, you know, I have textures. I have all of these things that um, I think make it look very interesting. Um, and then I can just go ahead and show you the, the entire process of how I got to this point in ZBrush, but also um, the post tools, which is obviously what we are here, right? Um, so let me just show you a couple of things as well. So these are some of the poses that I came up with. Um, the one that I'm showing you right now is this one right here. Uh, but then after those poses, I went ahead and created some renders. Again, uh, these renders are not from uh, Reolution but, or from Character Creator, but you can totally do that from Character Creator. I just decided to use uh, Marmoset Toolback 3 because, uh, or Toolback 4, sorry, which is another rendering software um, uh, just because you know, <laughs> I like to try different things. There's no real specific reason why. Um, and then um, after that, I just took that into Procreate or, you know, you can do the same thing in Photoshop. And I created this type of more illustration type of thing. Um, again, it's just using the render, but then just painting over, creating that uh, chromatic aberration around it. Um, there's another version here. So it's the same, using the same um, pose, but two different angles or two different cameras uh, to create this type of render. Um, and yeah, that's it. So let's go ahead and get started with the good stuff. All right, so um, the cool thing about the the, the character creator um, or the AccuRig, which is the uh, the tool within character creator to rig a humanoid character is that once you have your rig, um, you can spend a little bit of time just setting it up, but once you have the rig, it's really, really easy to just change poses. So um, I have already created a library, uh, which is another cool thing that you can do. You can just save a new post and I'll show you that. Hopefully we have time, uh, but I can just double click and. Basically, you see, I have a completely new pose, and I can send that uh, to ZBrush, and it will retain all my um, all my subdivision levels and all of that. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, let me show you a couple more. Um, I think this is the one that I use for the render. No, this one, Spidey Zero One. This one. Yeah. So this is the the one that I use for the render, um, and created those illustration based on this one. All right. So what I'm gonna do is start from scratch so that you know the entire workflow. And I'll give you the overview of what I did in ZBrush uh, really quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. And I'm not going to save this. And then just leave it as it is. All right, so this is just um, go back to more of a default version. So I, I don't have anything here. We'll come back to this in a bit. Let's go ahead and go back into ZBrush. And this is exactly uh, kind of like how I started this project, right? So um, you can use one of the base meshes from ZBrush, one of the base meshes from Character Creator as well. You can just send it to ZBrush and start working on your humanoid character, or you can use um, you know, any other tool or any other way of setting up a, uh, a base mesh for your character. So in this case, I have a DynaMesh, which if I get closer, is a pretty dense um, mesh. Let me turn on Polyframe. So you see this, oops, I think I went a little bit too far. Oh no, <laughs> let's wait until it usually recovers. Um, I went a bit too close uh, because yeah, this 2.7 million polygons on this, um, on this object. Um, let's give it a couple of seconds. Hopefully it's not going to, to crash. Mm, human error there. Um, 
Hang on. Let me just do it again. Oh, I might not have the, the nice colors. So <laughs> we're we're back to the we're back to the original. Um doesn't matter, it's just the colors. The the UI is the same. All right, sorry about that. We're back to to this. So like I said, this is going to be um a uh, dynamic object. So a dynamic object just has uh, lots of lots of different uh, polygons here. So 2.7 million polygons, and you can control the resolution of the dynamic with this slider right here. Um, so again, I'm not going to go through the entire process of how I sculpted this because uh, the the focus is on the posing tools. Uh, but just so that you have a rough idea of the you know the workflow or the process that I follow. So um, dynamic here. Yeah. So under the geometry palette here on the tool palette, you find the dynamic resolution and the dynamic object. So this is pretty much what I have here in my UI. So you can just uh, change these to, let's say, something like this. Redynamic, and you see we have uh, a lot less polygons. So you can start with something like that. I just started with a, a pretty high resolution so that um, I can keep the, you know, the, the fingers. Otherwise, um, what dynamic does is try to combine everything and, and kind of like, create a single mesh. So if you have not, um, if you don't have enough space between the fingers, it's just going to merge them together. So that's why I have a pretty high resolution here. All right, so this is kind of like my base. Um, I removed any type of indications of a face, just have a, a tiny bump here for the nose uh, to create that sort of effect of the mask. Um, and after that, I went ahead and refined the sketch a little bit more just to make it a bit more stylized. So you see, um, we have these you know, the pictorial and all of these anatomy, it's a little bit more refined. Um, and to refine it even more, to sharpen it up, to make it that sort of like illustration, stylization type of thing. Um, I use a couple of brushes. Um, so let me just show you which ones. Um, so this one called the Geo Soft Brush. Uh, this is a brush that I developed uh, based on an, an amazing artist uh, called uh, Geo Napkin. He's the, the, 3D, uh, the, the head of the department of the 3D uh, tools in Adobe. Um, and he's a fantastic artist. So um, I kind of like replicate one of the, the stuff that, uh, one of the methods that he used to create um, characters and uh, soft forms. So this brush allows you to, um, let me just show you really quickly. So it allows you to, to sharpen things up if you press the Alt key like so. And if with the normal effect, you can sort of like carve things in. So if you're familiar with ZBrush, it's a very similar brush to the uh, the dam standard, just to carve things like that. All right. So I can just define, let's say, the rib cage here, smooth things out, and then create kind of like the, you know, the abdominal muscles. All right. So I'm just sketching this very quickly, but that's basically the brush that I use to refine the anatomy. And then I end up with something like this. Uh, by the way, uh, be between this step and this step, I just run a serial measure. And let me just show you what a serial measure looks like. So let's go to the serial measure here. So serial measure, again, is a process to uh, to simplify the, or yeah, to recreate the topology and simplify it a little bit. So with symmetry enabled, um, I went ahead and let's go ahead and set a target polygon count of, I think 2,000 would be okay. Maybe, maybe less than that. Let's go 1,000. And let's click on serial measure. So serial is going to go through the process of taking this very sketchy, very dense mesh with all your, you know, anatomy um, uh, kind of like definition in a way, uh, and create a basic topology or a, a much simplified topology that maintains the volume that you describe that you created. So let's just give it a second. There we go. So this is an automated uh, automated way of doing it. So you see, you have um, a nicer topology. It's not the best. Um, because I set it to 1,000, and you see, you know, the fingers are not great, but you can go ahead and do this a little bit more uh, thoroughly than this. Uh, but again, it's for for a sketch and for uh, for the purpose of this demo, uh, I'm just gonna leave it like that. As I just wanted to show you the the steps, right? Um, so after I had that, let me show you this one. This is the base um, anatomy or the base mesh that I end up with. And you see it's a little bit more defined and I have subdivision levels. So subdivision levels just allow you to subdivide the mesh just to get more resolution. So I'm going to go to level two and you can access the subdivision levels from here, from the geometry palette right here. So I'm going to show you the um, subdivision level five, which has 1.6 million polygons, right? So you see it is a pretty sharp, um, 
you know, anatomy. And that's when I use the, the soft, uh, the Geo soft brush to define all of this. So this is basically my base mesh for the Spider-Man. And then just to finalize it, what I did was to, um, you know, duplicate it. So I have like all my steps in different subtools here in ZBrush. And this is the version, uh, let me switch to the skin shade four, which is a different material. I'm gonna show you what that is. So in the material palette, um, I had this one. So I just went ahead and select the skin shade four that comes with ZBrush. So this one right here, so that you can see a bit better um, the colors. So yeah, so what I did was uh, colorize or, or paint this in, you know, create a, a, my own color, kind of like custom design. It's not, you know, based on the on the actual Spider-Man from the across the, the Spider-Verse, but you know, something uh, you kind of like tell that is the Spider-Man, <laughs> I suppose. So I'm gonna turn off the poly paint from here, and you see, uh, all I did was just uh, take this spider um, logo and carve that in, right? And the same thing for the the eyes of the Spider-Man. Uh, so in the same way, really, and then just added the poly paint. So now I had. Um, a mesh that I can use to send to Reolution, right? Or to send to the character creator three, uh, four, sorry. So um, with CC4, um, basically you can send this as a distance subdivision level, so 6.5 million polygons. So I subdivide this even more. Uh, you can send it, but because we have, uh, you know, subdivision levels, you can go back to the lowest subdivision level um, and Reolution is going to, or sorry, Character Creator 4 is going to automatically uh, turn this into the lowest subdivision level or is going to read the lowest subdivision level so that you can post things um, a lot easier. Now, um, let me just show you something else because after doing this, I went ahead and created the, the clothing. So um, I'm gonna show you something else in here that, that is slightly different from the previous one. So you'll notice that this, model also has the, the spider webs or the the pattern here. Um, so once I had the poly paint, once I had the color, I could use something like um, in the masking palette. And by the way, uh, Kai, if you can let me know, um, if I go over like, you know, 10 more minutes on this, let me know so I can just move on to the, on to the tools. I just wanna cover all the steps so that we can get um, to character creator four. Oh yeah, no worries, man, take your time. <laughs> cool, cool. All right. Uh, so in the masking palette here in Zeros under the tool palette, um, you have this option to mask by color, right? And this is basically what I have. I just have color or poly paint, um, literally painted the, the vertex in ZBrush. And I can just go ahead and select by, uh, by poly paint. So I can click on mask by poly paint and this window will pop up. And I could say, hey, I want to have this specific color or, um, just for the sake of demo, I'm gonna use this white color just to show you. Uh, it's the same thing that I did uh, for the green one. Oh, in fact, let's use the green one. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna click and drag from this uh, swatch to select the color I want. So you see it automatically selects that, um, that swatch or that hue. And then I can play with the tolerance, which is set to 30 by default to um, spread that selection a little bit more, but I think 30, the default works just fine. And I'm gonna click okay. So now if I go ahead and turn off my poly paint, from the subtool here, this icon right here. Uh, this is what I have. Uh, hang on, that's not what I wanted. Let me just do it again. Uh, mask by poly paint. So I'm gonna select this bit, change the tolerance a bit. There we go. So 14 works a little bit better. So you see, we automatically have the mask for that specific color, which is really handy. And that is pretty much what I did to create the, the pattern. So I inverted the mask. Uh, maybe before I, um, inverting the mask, I blurred it a little bit. So holding control and click once on the mask, or you can do it from the masking palette. You can also blur the mask here. So I'm gonna invert it now, and I'm gonna use the deformation palette here, uh, which sometimes I, I struggle to, to find things here because uh, I have all of these tools in custom palettes, like you see here. So I'm just bringing in some of my custom palettes, but all of them are in here. So in the deformation palette, I use the, um, the inflate. So let's get a little bit closer here. So if I push this out, it's going to inflate based on the normal. So that is pretty much what I did. I'm gonna exaggerate it so that you can see. All right, and then clear the mask and then bring back the poly paint. There we go. So that's essentially what I did to create that pattern. Uh, pretty straightforward. And finally, I'm gonna go ahead and select this one. Uh, you see the color changed a little bit and there is a little bit of um, kind of like dust and, and dirt around it. Uh, that is because I decided to take this into um, Substance 3D Painter and, you know, create a little bit of a variation in the roughness. And in fact, if, if we go back, oh, I already closed it, but in the um, uh, Character Creator 
uh, file, you'll see that the actual pattern that I created for the webs is actually metallic, um, just to create a bit of variation. So there's a tiny little variation here between this one and this one. Um, and I think this one looks a little bit better. There's a little bit more contrast. Anyway, so um, once this is done, then I created the clothing. So let's get into solo mode. All right, so for the clothing, I'm gonna turn everything on. Um, again, pretty straightforward process. I have uh, the belt as a single subtool or a separate subtool. I have the hoops for the belt, the jacket. Again, very, very simple stuff. Uh, the hoodie and the hoodie strings as well. And then I also have the shorts. All of these has been created from the character itself or from the base mesh that I had. So I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I'm gonna show you how I created this. So if I select something like this, this one right here, I'm gonna clone it so I can work on a separate mesh. All right, and in fact, let's, yeah, let's leave it as it is. So um, what I like to do is, let's say, this is the character that I'm working on. I want to duplicate this. So now I have exactly the same thing. Um, and I'm gonna go and delete uh, maybe the higher and the lower subdivision level. So now this is not the highest subdivision level, but I still have plenty of resolution uh, to work with. And I'm gonna smooth this out as well. Not interested in having all of those details in there. All right, just pressing the shift key and it's moving that out. And in fact, let's go ahead and give it a, you know, something else, a different color, fill object, so that you know which one I'm using. All right, so this is kind of like the process that I use to create any type of accessory or uh, clothing or anything that um, ideally is going to be fitted around the, the body of the character. So in this case, the pants are fine. So um, I like to enable polyframe so that I can see this is the, the wireframe. And I'm gonna go ahead and hold the control and shift to access my selection tools here. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna go for the slice curve, right? So the slice curve allows you to basically holding control and shift, click and drag, slice through the model and you see it just creates a different polygroup. And if I get closer, it just has um, a very sharp line or a divisive um, kind of like a difference between the polygroups or the, the polygon IDs. So let me go ahead and undo that. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. So control, shift, and this is gonna be the, the top area for the pants. Maybe do it from this angle. Uh, by the way, one thing that you can do is um, actually create a, a, a little bit of, um, of a curvature. So if I hold Control and Shift to click and drag, now I have a single straight line. But if I press the Alt key once, it creates a point like a Bessier curve. So it just creates that sort of curvature. So I can go ahead and do that. And obviously this is not the same on one side and in the other, right? Uh, even though I have symmetry enabled, by the way, symmetry is on the transform palette, this one right here, uh, because this brush doesn't work, uh, for the most part, it doesn't work with, um, with symmetry, right? So what I can do is click on mirror and well, so I have exactly the same thing. And that for you would be on the, the geometry palette. Uh, you can go to the modified topology right here and click on mirror and well. So now we have exactly the same thing on both sides. Let's go ahead and cut the legs maybe from this side for the pants and do the same thing, mirror and weld. So now we have exactly the same thing. And then I'm gonna use the selection tools. So control shift and click on the brush uh, thumbnail to select this one, the select rectangular piece. And I'm gonna isolate this one. So control and shift to click once to isolate it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove these ones by holding control and shift and then the alt key just to invert that selection. So, uh, oops, the other way around. So something like that. I have a very simple uh, mesh just for the pants, but everything else is still there, is still hidden. So if I hold Control and Shift and invert, you see it's still there. So what I like to do is just go ahead and in the modified topology again, um, where the mirror and well is, I'm gonna click on Delete Hidden. All right, so now I've deleted Hidden. Um, and then I can use the same tool that I showed you at the beginning for the for the body, the zero measure. I wanna set a target polygon count of uh, 0.5. This number is in the thousands. So 0.5 is about 500 uh, polygons and click on serial measure. And that's it. We now have a cleaner version of the, of the pants uh, and it's a single sided mesh, all right? So what I like to do at this point is obviously, uh, let's get out of solo mode. I wanna go to the deformation palette and I'm gonna inflate the entire thing. So I'm gonna click on inflate. So now we have some nice pants. Um, and if you wanna give it some thickness, you can actually enable the dynamics of division. So in the geometry palette, you have this dy dynamic subdivision. I'm gonna click on that one. And, we'll and I'm gonna click on dynamic. And that dynamic basically uh, gives you a preview of how things will look if you were to subdivide it. So um, right now it's showing you like a subdivision level of two. I'm gonna set it to maybe three. So it's a bit smoother. 
I'm going to switch to a different material so that you can see some nice and smooth uh, pants. And then I'm going to go ahead and click, uh, click on this uh, thickness. And you see it is, again, giving some thickness to the pants. Uh, but this is dynamic, right? So that is pretty cool. Um, and if it is too sharp here in the edge, you can go ahead and click on this post subdivision. And that is basically going to apply the thickness before uh, it does the dynamic subdivision. So you have something um, a bit cleaner there. So that is it, right? And this is obviously a mesh. And this is dynamic. So you can turn it on and off, right? You can just go ahead and use uh, you know, a brush like the move brush to adjust it a little bit, make it a bit more. You know, because this is kind of like some some boxers that are a little bit too tight, um, so you can just make them um, a bit, you know, loose, like so, and then enable dynamic, or you can work with dynamic enable. Doesn't really matter. All right, and then you have the pants, and that's basically what I did for the rest of the clothing. So uh, where were we? Yeah. So you can see it is the same thing. Um, in this case, I created uh, quite a bit of um of a gap in between the legs here, and you see this. There's quite a bit of space here. Uh, and that was intentional so that the, the rig kind of like easily uh, differentiates between the two legs. So when I do the extreme poses, I don't have to do that much post processing or, or tweaking things at the end. Uh, but you, know, you probably don't have to do that. All right, so now that you know how I created this, let's go ahead and start with the fun stuff. Um, actually, let me show you one more thing because the, the shoes are not in this file. All right, so I went ahead actually and I also created the textures for the clothing in um, Substance 3D Painter. So that's why you see it's a little bit noisy here. Um, but in fact, it's just because it has, you know, kind of like a fabric material attached to it. And But for the shoes, what I did, exactly the same process that I show you, I started with the um, with the foot of the character or one of the, the foot of the character and then um, extruded some of the pieces to create this. So if I open up the shoe, this is the only thing that I wanted to show you um, here. Hang on, let me turn everything off. All right, cool. So um, for the shoelaces, I use uh, C spheres. So this is a C sphere chain. You can just create or append a C sphere and start working um, with these more complex shapes. And then you can turn that into uh, into a mesh, which is pretty much what I did. Um, this one right here. So it's not the best. Like I said, it's it's a quick sketch. I don't have. Um, I didn't spend too much time, to be honest, uh, setting this up. As long as you can understand that these are kind of like the the Jordan Air uh, shoes. That's you know that's all I need. Um, so yeah, that's how I created the, the shoelace. But you see every single bead, um, the Nike logo, everything else is separate in different pieces. And if I turn the polyframe, you see they're pretty simple, and they're based on the. Uh, on the on the on the foot of the character, right? So I just like did the same thing that I just showed you. I sliced one bit, um, created dynamic subdivision with thickness, and ended up with all of these pieces. So you see all of the the pieces here that make up the shoe is there, and then I just merge everything together into uh, what I have here. So I have the body that I already show you and I already covered. I have the clothing as well, and this is where the you know the final shoe looks like. It's kind of like everything combined or merged together. And then I also added some zippers um, just because I wanted to try like try or test uh, an object like this that is going to be very, very complex to, to weight paint in the rig in um, Character Creator 4. Uh, but I did a pretty good job. Uh, honestly, this is something that I would do once I have the dynamic pose ready. I will go ahead and create the zipper on that pose so that it feels more natural. But again, this is just like me trying to break <laughs> the, the, the tools that, that I was going to that I was going to use and actually did a pretty good job. Um, anyway, so now that I have this and you kind of have an idea of how I got to this point, let's move on into the um, the actual rig or uh, how to create the rig. So I'm going to use, um, let's use this Spidey character here. And I'm going to clone that and remove the rest. Sorry, not this one, this one. And actually, I'm just thinking. I want to copy all of this. Just give me one second. So copy this. I should have prepared this one. I just had a, I was going to show you just with one um, sub tool, but I think it's going to be a little bit better if I show you the whole thing. Actually, let's do it with these two. All right. So this is enough just to show you that you can do this with multiple sub tools. It doesn't have to be one. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the left tray here. And I'm going to use the C plugin or the C plugin palette. I'm going to dog that into the left by clicking on this icon right here and drag and drop it in there. And here's where the uh, ZBrush Post tools live. 
and that's basically the rest of the of the webinar is all about uh, the post tools, right? So you can have any humanoid character. It could be anything, really. Um, you can have three fingers, two fingers, anything that you want. Uh, you can have accessories. Um, so, you know, anything that you want, really, and, and then it will be rigged nicely. So if you click on this ZBrush uh, post tools, this is the uh, the plugin that I'm talking about. This is the post tool from Character Creator. Uh, there is another one that um, just don't pay attention to this one. This one was a, a better thing. <laughs> so this is the, the, the old version. Uh, we're going to concentrate on the available version that you can download for free from the Reillusion page as well. Um, all right, let me just cancel that autosave. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and change my quick saves so that it doesn't happen that often. Because if I accidentally click on something um, while it's saving, it probably crashed. All right, cool. So um, the first thing I want to show you is that you can just go ahead and use this without the need of having Character Creator 4. So the the best thing that I would say is that having Character Creator 4 allows you to do your own custom rig. So it makes it so much easier to just create uh, the tools and sorry, the poses. Um, and it's just a very simple process. And once I show you how it kind of like interacts between the, the interaction between ZBrush and Character Creator 4, you'll see it's a, it's a very simple process and it's a really cool workflow. However, if you only want to use um, ZBrush, you know, by all means, um, and you can use this free tool to uh, manage your tools. So what I like to do is, um, actually go to another plugin here. I uh, will come back to this in just a second. I just want to show you if you just want to concentrate on ZBrush stuff, um, you can go ahead and open up the Transpose Master. And this is something that comes with ZBrush by default. And I'm going to click on T-Post to Mesh. And this is very useful if you have, like I said, multiple subtools, because what it's going to do is merge everything together into a single subtool. You see, this is kind of like a clone. Um, it doesn't have polypaint or anything. And let's just change the, the color and to a different material, and it automatically goes and or reads the lowest subdivision level. So this is what um, traditionally you would use to pose a character. So if you're familiar with these tools and the, the way of uh, posing in character create, sorry, in zeros this way, uh, you can totally use uh, this and the plugin that I'm going to show you. So um, just for fun, let's go ahead and um, select a mask lasso. Uh, by the way, holding Control, click on the brush thumbnail. That's how you can access uh, your masking brushes. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, mask something like this. And I'm going to do a simple pose. Let's invert this and blur things a little bit. I'm going to bring in my gizmo by clicking on the Move tool or just pressing a W. And I'm going to center this to the, on mask areas. And you can either click on this icon to unlock the gizmo, or you can press the Alt key to move the, the pivot. And I'm going to put it here around the, um, the shoulder around there. And I'm just going to go ahead and move it like so. So you see, you can still do this. and. To be honest, this is something that I use um, a lot. So I, I kind of like use the uh, this process quite a bit for uh, posing my, my characters. But now, to be honest, anything that has a humanoid character, I just use a Reillusion uh, Character Creator for just to to pose and, and read my characters. It's just make it just makes it a lot easier. And the fact that you can sort of like manage your poses with the plugin that I'm going to show you, um, I think it just makes it you know, so much easier. And I'll be honest, I'm not saying just that because this is the Reillusion webinar. I, I truly think that is a very good tool. Um, and I did um, collaborate with the Reillusion guys to uh, sort of like develop this, this plugin. Obviously, I didn't have anything to do with the actual coding or creating the, the plugin itself. But um, we did have a, a few conversations about my workflow, how I use uh, ZBrush and how I post characters in ZBrush and what I would expect from a tool like this one to um, to work with, or you know, how uh, what I would expect the this the plugin to have. Um, so they um, a lot of the things that you'll find in that plugin are based on some of the workflows that I've been playing around with. So it's just a, a, a simple way of accessing tools that uh, you might find um, already in ZBrush. So it just takes a lot of the of the manual work and simplifies it. Anyway, so I just want to show you this is a very simple pose. I didn't spend too much time. It's just basically moving things and masking things. Uh, once you're happy with your pose, again, I haven't touched Character Creator. This is just ZBrush, right? Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to click on this layer so, um, switch here. And that layer switch, essentially what it does is uh, tell ZBrush that when I send this current pose to my working file, it's going to create a layer or a sculpting layer for each subtool. So let's go ahead and click on T-Pose to Subtool. And let's just wait for a little bit. There we go. So five seconds to uh, to translate that post into my working file. So the working file just means that I, I retain my um, all my subdivision levels. So you know 
I have all my details in here, right? I have my highest subdivision level, the lowest subdivision level, and all of that. Uh, and I have my post. So if I go ahead and open up my layers here, these layers are under the tool palette. You'll see that I have this new layer that has been created. So that means if I toggle this on or off, it goes back to, it's going to solo mode. Uh, it goes back to the original post or the, the A post. And then this layer is the one that uh, contains the, the post, right? And the same thing for the other subtool, right? So I'm going to select the subtool. I'm showing you the manual process and turn this on and off. So the idea with the plugin as well is that once you, ha once you have these um, poses, right? Or these layers, even if it is just one, you can manage them all within this plugin, right? Because imagine if you have, I don't know, 20 or, or 30 different subtools, you will have to like manually go ahead and turn these layers on and off for every single subtool every time that you want to change to a different pose or, you know, uh, yeah, just to, to visualize something different. So it makes it really complicated. So with the plugin, what you can do is click on convert layers to pose. So again, one layer currently on each one of the subtools. I'm going to click on convert layers to pose. And basically, what um, what the plugin is doing is going through um, all of the subtools, or, or yeah, so all the subtools, and then creating a, um, a renaming the layer that is currently there, and then apply it in here. So you see the name of the layer changes to CC Pose underscore on title layer. Uh, so now I have this switch here, which is awesome. Uh, I can go ahead and click on it, and then it goes through everything automatically. If I click on it again to get out of it, it goes back to the A Pose. So it's awesome. So I'm going to click on this one to select it. And I'm going to click on uh, rename. So I'm going to call it um, simple, like so. And that's it. It just renames all of the layers. So I'm just going to show you. So this is the, the name that I just gave it. And that's it. So now I have this. And you can go ahead and do multiple poses and you know multiple dynamic poses if you want to, and save them all in here. And every time that you uh, bring in or convert a new layer, uh, or a new set of layers to a post, it will be in here as a switch. That is it. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to use the transpose master. You can also edit this, uh, the current post, like the simple post, or you can create another one from this plugin. So just to show you how that works, because uh, I want to cover the, the basic tools uh, all within Zebrush first, I want to go ahead and click on record new post. So if I click on this one, um, I'm going to call this one test with gizmo. So it's a new uh, a new post, and ultimately what this is doing behind the scenes is creating a new recording layer for each uh, subtool. So if I open up the layers, you see there is a new layer created that is currently recording, right? So again, this is kind of like the the manual process that I used to do, and that I was um, telling the Revolution guys like, hey, this is what I used to do. Um, it's cool and and everything, but it's really tedious if you have multiple subtools. So everything has been automated now. So um, the cool thing is that now I can go ahead and. Uh, maybe go to the geometry palette or the subtool palette here. And I'm going to go to the lowest subdivision level here. All right. So what I'll do is I'm going to select the, the head of the character, and I'm just going to make him look the other way. And bring in the gizmo, turn off symmetry. And maybe he's looking up. All right. So this is just a quick test anyway. Uh, but just to show you that you don't have to use the transpose master, you can actually use this um, with multiple subtools. It's just a little bit more tedious if you want to, for example, move the, the arm because you have everything separate. So if I want to move the entire arm, I will have to mask this and then go into the other one, mask it, invert the mask, go into the other one, mask it. Um, and then I can bring in the, the gizmo, do the same thing that I did before, kind of like place it around there. And then I have to click this icon right here that allows you to move multiple subtools at once. And then you have, you know, you can tweak that. But it's a little bit more tedious and it's not perfect. So I prefer to use the Transpose Master, which is a free tool that comes with Zbrush anyway, and it's pretty powerful. Uh, but anyway, just to co complete this workflow, once you have created your or tweaked your pose, you can click on Save Record. And again, behind the scenes, what it's doing is stopping the recording layers of every single um, subtool that you have. You can have 20, 30 subtools, and you have it here. So that is really cool because now you can turn on and off these ones and then go back into the simple one that I created with Transpose Master, and you see everything works. Now, if you want to edit something, let's say click on the simple one, and you want to edit this, uh, you can just go ahead and click on Edit Pose, and it will enable the recording of that layer, and you can go ahead and edit. But I'm going to do that later on. Uh, in, or actually just in a bit so that we can get into Character Creator. 
Um, so let's go ahead and go back to this one. Or actually, I'm going to show you something else. Um, now, let's use this one. I'm just going to rename this so that it's a little bit better. And let me just see, hit the notes just to make sure that I don't miss anything that I want to show you. All right, cool. So I want to rename this. And I'm going to call it body with capitals, just so I remember what it is. Uh, rename this one. I'm going to call this one clothes and zipper as well. So rename zipper. And the rest, I'm just going to leave them um, hidden. So it's just going to send these three objects. Uh, one thing, though, that maybe I should be able to show you is that you can have accessories as well. In this case, everything that is uh, clothing, um, even the zipper, are accessories for the character, but they're very close to the body. So I will include that into the binding post. Um, so just for fun, let's go ahead and create some goggles for this guy or some kind of like, maybe like a hat, <laughs> just so that you know that you can do this uh, with guns and things like that. So I'm going to click on append and I'm going to click on a cylinder. That's not a cylinder. Sorry. Delete that one. Append. Cylinder. So this is going to be a, a hat for Spider-Man, like a top hat. All right, I'm going to go in solo mode. And very quickly, I'm going to turn this into a hat uh, by using symmetry, radial symmetry. And I'm going to set a polygon count of 32. I know it's 32 because um, you know this is the, the default cylinder and it has 32 sides. Uh, I'm going to use C-Modeler. And I'm going to use QMesh, Polygroup All. I'm going to tag these polygons. Again, I'm going very quickly through this process because it's you know, it's nothing to do with we are, where we actually working on. So top hat like that. I'm gonna insert multiple edge loops like so. There we go. Then and I'm gonna remove these polygroups. All right, maybe this one as well. All right, so we have this very simple um, object. I'm going to add a, a couple of subdivisions here as well. And I'm going to use the dynamic subdivision that I used before just to give this some thickness. Why is it not? Oh, delete hidden. There we go. Sorry. I had something hidden, but I didn't delete it. All right. So I'm just going to give some thickness to this thing. There we go. Um, again, it's not, I know, it doesn't really match um, anything that I'm showing you, but I just want to have something that is not necessarily uh, something that would deform with the body. Uh, just to show you that you can totally do something like that. And I'm going to use uh, the move brush just to give it a slightly bit more shape because otherwise it's too boring. All right. <laughs> I'm spending a little bit too much time on this one. I think you get the idea, right? So I'm going to go ahead and apply subdivision. So we have multiple subdivision levels um, or not. What did happen here? So apply. Oh, interesting. Hang on. I'm going to apply this and do it manually. I don't know what happened there. Um, maybe a little bug. All righty. So um, let's go ahead and call this one um, hat. And now we have something that we can actually use in uh, Character Creator. All righty. So, the whole point is that once you have your subdivision levels, you have everything ready in your character in this A pose, or it could be also, you know, um, uh, kind of like a, a T pose. I prefer to use this um, just because it's it's a lot easier to have everything kind of like in a relax, uh, relax pose. Uh, once you're happy with this, all I'm going to do is make sure I have a character creator open and I don't have anything or like a new project, just again, new project, 
make sure there's nothing in here. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and click on visible. Now you can also click on all, but it's going to send everything that is hidden. And I have a bunch of uh, rubbish here that I don't want to send. Uh, you can also click on go see and it's going to send whatever is uh, selected. Now, if it is the first time that you are using this tool or sending things to character creator, uh, you might get a pop up um, asking you to, you know, find out where you install character creator. All you have to do is just tell ZBrush, hey, this is the the executable program or the uh, the tool that I want to use, and it will automatically send things in there. So I already done that. So I'm going to click on visible, and I'm going to continue this. And let me just grab some water here. All right. So now it's sending everything to CC4. Let's go ahead and go back in here, and you see that this is the the, um, the pop-up that you get. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention actually is that uh, Zbrush deals with a with a weird scale, so that's why in this um, uh, plugin you also have these things in here. So right now, um, if I go ahead and just click on update and add this to my CC4, it's going to be pretty tiny, probably like cent like eight centimeters or something like that. So if you want to. Um, you can just go ahead and select a specific height here based on centimeters or uh, foot. And you see, it's just going to analyze how big it is based on that. Go back to centimeters. Um, and if you want, you can just go ahead and click on resize. So all of these tools are sort of based on the scale master in a way. Right, so these are you know similar things that you can just use. Uh, this one also comes with zeros. You can just scale your sub tools and all of that. Uh, but again, it's very very simple so that it matches the scale in CC4. I personally um, only use this one if I know that what I'm working with in ZBrush is the height that I require or that I need. Uh, if not, if I just don't know exactly what I'm doing with the scale, um, what I do is just I ignore this, I send it, and instead I can click on this match CC model scale to 100. So it's going to automatically take whatever uh, scale I have in ZBrush in whatever units, and it's going to convert them to something that uh, works well with character creator. And then I can do the same thing when I send it back. So this is the first step. Just taking everything, just to recap, uh, click on visible and send it in here. And yeah, so now I want to create a prop. Obviously, it's not going to be a character or you won't see the option of a character because character creator doesn't know that this is a character. For, for CC4, this is just a mesh or a prop. So I'm going to make sure I have everything and I have the textures. So I'm going to change the textures a little bit to 2048, just so that it's not as big. Uh, but it doesn't mean that it cannot handle it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Update. And let's just wait for a bit. And it's basically taking all of that into ZBrush uh, with the lowest subdivision level. All right, so not too bad. We have the hat and everything. Uh, there's something weird here with the pants, but that probably has to do with the normals. So um, I'm going to go ahead and open up this scene, uh, expand the body, click on the clothes, and let me just check. Yep, so there is there is some normal that um, shouldn't be there. So I'm just going to delete that. All right, and that fixes it. Maybe let's check that the body also doesn't have All right. I mean, let me just check. This is actually the normal of the body. I think so. Yeah, so this is the normal of the body. So that's working fine, um, I think. I'm going to flip the Y channel. Um, I'm not sure if this is the one. I, I have an old file anyway. So I'm just going to delete it. doesn't really matter. Uh, but this is just the, the point that you can just drag and drop your um, normal ambient occlusion, metallic, anything like that uh, from 3D Painter, for example, and it will work just fine, uh, like I showed you in the in the early version of this file that I showed you before. Um, anyway, so now we have four objects. Now, this is the fun part, all right? So what I'm going to do is, at this point that we are now in Character Creator, before I start with AkiCub, um, anything that you guys want to ask or any, any questions you, you want to ask at this point, um, again, we're, we're going to do a Q&A at the end, I think. Um, but at this point, if there is anything, a couple of questions, Kai, if you have them, um, happy to answer before we move into the, the actual uh, rigging of the character. Uh, just briefly looking at the Q&A, it doesn't seem like anything really related to the workflow. So I guess there was one here, a couple of questions, I think, relating to the workflow so far. The first one um, from anonymous attendee asks, is it better to start with a base mesh with retopology? I, I... Right. Um, can, can you see those questions too? Uh, no, but I can have a look at them. Yeah, it's in the Q&A there. This is from anonymous attendees, so I'm not sure who 
who to call out to elaborate if I need to. Oh, got it. It's it's better to start with a base mesh with Retopo. Um, look, the the easy answer or the short answer is not um, not really. It it really depends if you already know what you're going to do. Um, let's say uh, a humanoid character that is pretty generic, pretty standard, uh, someone that's going to be in the background, by all means, start with a base mesh. Uh, I generally don't do that. Or if I start with a base mesh, just for simplicity's sake, uh, you know, that has like a few polygons, I start with that, but I will probably redynamesh it and cut it up into pieces. I don't really worry about technicalities of things like the topology until the end, once I'm happy with the design and I know it's working, that's when I think, okay, let's do a retopology or let's work again on the topology uh, to make it more you know, plausible for an animation and things like that. But um, yeah, by all means, working with, um, with a base mesh is really helpful uh, if it, the topology is already there. Um, if you wanna concentrate on or stick with something that is you know, dictated by the topology. So in other words, um, to simplify my answer, if you want to, you can go ahead and start with the base mesh of character creator, and then you can mod modify it and morph it a little bit, and then send it to ZBrush and sculpt on top of that. But you're limited to what that base mesh can give you. So if you want to add some some horns or something or um, whatever sticking out from the shoulders, right? You have to do that as a separate mesh, or if you want to include it into the topology, that's when you have to retopologize. So it's more about designing, I guess. Um, Probably that's the easiest way of thinking about it. If you want to design something very unique or um, different from what the base mesh is giving you, then don't worry about the topology until the end. That's it. Yeah, if you're a beginner, if you're like a, a knucklehead like me with uh, <laughs> with ZBrush, you might want to just start with the CC4 topography, anyways. But uh, that's just me. Uh, yeah, fair we'll, enough. We'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll do we'll do another question uh, here, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe two more questions, and then we'll move on to the CC part. I think here. Yeah. Um, Ferdos, Ferdos asks, do you draw the pattern first by sculpting? Uh, the, you mean the pattern? Of, I suppose you're referring to the web pattern of Spider-Man? I, I guess? believe so. Yeah, yeah. That might have, it's around that time. Yeah. 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 So um, let me just show you something quickly. This one is going to be easier. Um, let's use a sphere here. Yeah, he clarified, so, yes, this is the one he wants to know about, yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. So uh, the pattern, yeah, I just draw it first on the on a mesh that has enough resolution. So at this point, this sphere has 500 uh, you know, points. So what I did is actually, and this is something that you can use, anyone can use it, because the GeoBrush is free to download. So you can just go to the ZBrush guides and get it. Uh, this is one of the hidden things that I set up in this brush. So like I said, this brush is mainly for doing this type of sort of like cuts, like so. Right, uh, but if you go ahead and turn off the Z sub, so now there is no um, influence of the volumes. You're not actually affecting the volume, and you can go ahead and turn on the RGB. You can actually create a very sharp line, and you can also, um, you know, change the the focal shift a little bit. So it's a it's a very uh, sharp line. So this is pretty much what I use to create the pattern, and I just went ahead and did this. Obviously, this is pretty quick, but um, that is the pattern. And then to create the volume, because obviously, if I turn off polypane, it's not there. Um, I use the technique that I show you where I selected by color, just the mask by polypane, or yeah, mask by color of the polypane, uh, create a mask, invert it, and then I just inflate that pattern. And then I smooth everything out a little bit. So that's, yeah, that's basically what I use. Nice. Yeah, that kind of goes into the next question. I don't mention the geo brush. Um, anonymous attendee here yeah. asks, is the GeoBrush available anywhere by chance or a CFG yeah, yeah, file for the UI he, UI he uses? Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's free. If you go to the uh, ZBrush guides, I'll show you. So just go to the to the ZBrush guides, and if you go to resources, this is the first one. By the way, just so you know, um, anything that appears kind of like in this banner is whatever is the latest thing that I've updated. So if you go in here to the sculpting brushes, if not, you can just go ahead and find it in here. Um, the sculpting brushes is like a set of sculpting brushes that I found useful, um, and they're all free, so you can just go ahead and download them. So this is the gear brush. You can just click on it, and it starts downloading straight away. Like, it doesn't require you to do anything. Just click on it, and it downloads. Uh, there are other brushes as well, as well that you can use, um, and these are all the free brushes that I use. And this one is something uh, new that I shared last week, and I'm going to be sharing one new brush this week with my um, newsletter, right? So if you want to be part of the newsletter, just go to anywhere in my um, you know, ZBrush guides as well. And then you can just drop your email 
a name here and then subscribe. It is the same newsletter of the 3D Concept Artist, just so you know, the same thing here. So you can just uh, go to the news newsletter um, and then you will get it. But yeah, it is free to, to download and you can just uh, get it. The only caveat, the only thing is that it needs to, or you need to have at least ZBrush 2022. Um, it doesn't work with previous versions of ZBrush because uh, yeah, I created it with this um, version. Cool. Excellent. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, let's let's move on to the next uh, part here. Uh, just so everyone's aware, again, put your questions in the Q&A uh, panel there and we'll answer them uh, after the next part of the demo here. Awesome. All righty. So um, this is how this works. Once we are here in um, CC4, um, I'm going to go ahead and select the main uh, item here on my hierarchy, which is the, the prop at this point. So you see it is under the props, right? Uh, so I'm going to select that one. And you see on the modify panel, if you don't see this, you can go to the uh, window here and then it's modify panel here. Um, so in this area, you have the edit mesh, you can have um, you know, edit spring, all of these things that are also fun, but I'm just gonna go ahead and click on AccuCurve. This is the one that you need to uh, find. So AccuCurve, uh, sorry, AccuRig is, uh, is the tool that allows you to rig your character automatically. So you see it sends all of these props and all of these things to the AccuRig. Um, and it's currently everything is kind of like grayed out. So what I'm gonna do is generate the guides for my rig. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna force uh, symmetry, although, you know, for the most part, it's symmetrical. It's just the, the zippers probably that are not. Uh, so I'm going to force symmetry in all the meshes. So I'm going to include everything in here in my rig or in my guides. I'm going to click on cre create guides and I'm just going to let uh, CC4 do its magic. Um, and this is what I think is, is phenomenal, right? Like, remember that the topology that I created for this character is a made up topology. So you can make anything. Um, but CC4 does a pretty good job identifying the limbs of the character, the torso, and it automatically plays these dots, right? So this is amazing. So um, what I like about this is that it's very, very intuitive, very simple, and you have these uh, references of where to play these dots. So if you don't want to see it, by the way, you can just click on this um, checkbox. But I I think it's good to, um, as a reminder of where to place these things. And yeah, I'm just going to move around. <clears throat> and with the, move, um, with the move selection or the move tool, I'm going to move this around. So I'm going to place this closer to this area. I think that's much better. Kind of like the base of the head. And the base of the neck, I'm going to select that one. And you see, this is telling me, put this um, at the base of the neck. So I'm going to move this around. And you see, it jumps a little bit. Let me undo that just so that you can see. So I'm going to select it. And I'm going to start moving on this axis. But you see, it's kind of like jumping all around. Um, if this happens to you, it could be a little bit frustrating if you don't know why it's doing it. Because right now, by default, what these dots are trying to do is um, look for the volume around them and try to find the average point. Um, and it's very handy for things like the arms and the fingers. But in something like that, or in this area, might not be as easy. So what you need to do is click on this midpoint placement. So if you tick this off, now you can just go ahead and move it a little bit more freely. So let's go ahead and place this at the at the base. Uh, if you want to see just the body, uh, you can go ahead and turn off the clothes just so you can place this a bit better. All right. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the, um, the clavicles here. I think I'm going to have to put this up a little bit. And then the shoulder, I think the shoulder, it's a... Uh, did a pretty good job placing it. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, same thing with the elbow. Um, this is where the midpoint placement is actually really handy. Because if I start moving this like that, and then like this, try to find a base, you know, the ideal place, it might not be in the center. So if I enable midpoint, it doesn't matter what I do. I'm just going to move it around, and it's going to try to find that middle point. So that's really handy. Cool. Um, I'm going to leave the wrist for the end. Uh, because it's one of the most important ones to get right uh, so that the fingers work. Uh, let's go ahead and click on the um, hip area or the pelvis. I'm going to put this. This is a very stylized character, so the, um, the belly button is right here. So I'm just going to place it around there, just following a little bit of that reference, and do the same thing for the, the star here of the hip. All right, I think something like that would work just fine. Uh, let's place the knees. And I'm doing this a little bit faster, but you, just to show you that um, even if you do it really quickly, it's going to work just fine. Um, but I'll probably spend a little bit more time making sure that you know, the placement of this is, is adequate. Uh, and if not, you, know, you can easily go back and 
readjust this. All right, so I think that works. And let's go ahead and click. Oh, by the way, one thing that I'm doing is I'm also using symmetry selection, but it's by default so that I only have to move one side. <clears throat> All right, so for the wrist, this is very important because depending on the placement on the wrist or based on where you place this, um, character creator is going to place the, the fingers. And that's, yeah, that's really important. All right, so that's it. Now let's go ahead and create the skeleton for everything. So all meshes, I'm gonna create a skeleton that includes even the hat, even though I don't have any dot or anything in there, uh, but I wanna include that in my rig. So let's go ahead. Ah, one more thing, sorry. Um, the number of fingers, obviously I have a humanoid character here that has five fingers, but like I said, you can just go ahead and um, have something without fingers or three fingers, whatever you want. So you can just select that and click on create skeleton. So I'm gonna step back a bit, make sure everything is visible. Uh, I don't think it matters to be honest. Um, not too sure about that, but I like to visualize everything, but I don't think it matters. As long as you click on all meshes, it will be fine. Click on generate skeleton. And this is the point where um, CC4 is actually creating the joints and the bones connecting those uh, points that we just created. And yeah, it's, to be honest, it's really, <laughs> is that, that's all there is to it, right? You just need to focus on, uh, you know, placing these dots in the right place or, you know, based on what the, um, the placement diagrams tells you where to place them, uh, create the guides and then create the skeleton. Um, and once the, the skeleton is created, you can actually go ahead and refine the placement of those uh, bones, which is a lot easier to kind of like visualize. So I'll show you in just a second. In the meantime, yeah. let me see if there's I was, another. I, I was going to add one quick thing there about the uh, the all meshes and the selected meshes. Um, oh. Since your character, like generally, if, if you have all meshes selected, um, you're basically, if it's if your clothing is conforming exactly to your body shape, like if it's fairly tight fitting, then mm -hmm. you want to just choose all meshes. But if you have like yep. some cape or something like that on there, then uh, you want to have selected meshes and only select the meshes that are, you know, rel relative to your body parts. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, <laughs> I think that that's kind of like what I wanted to to showcase with the hat. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to include the hat in the binding, but the idea is just to show you that you can edit the the weight painting on on anything really. So oh, okay, um, sure. yeah, hopefully hopefully that's going to showcase the the idea a bit better. Um, cool. Yeah, so I think this works fine. I'm just going to check the skeleton. And you see these dots that appear here. Mm, those are, might not be, again, it has to do with the placement of the, uh, of the wrist. So let me go ahead and undo that. I'm going to place this a bit better. Get rid of the midpoint. Just try to place this manually. This is the only thing that um, if you don't get it right for the like the first time, uh, you might have to go back and and try it again. Generate a skeleton again. The first time that I did it with the other character, uh, the actual project, uh, I didn't have to go back. It was just you know straight away and spot on. Uh, but even if we get something that doesn't look perfect right now, um, I'll show you how you can edit it quickly as well. It's the same thing. It's the same process of uh, placing the dots on the on the body. You can just place the dots in the, um, you know, in the joints and the phalanges of the of the hand of the fingers. But um, yeah. Let me check the. Uh, I'll check the um, the questions. I'm gonna start from the top and see if there's anything, or you know, if you wanna Kai, if you wanna share any any yeah, questions like related to this. More, more of the technical questions about ZBrush are already uh, already passed as far as I can see here. Okay. Uh, the next bunch are about uh, uh, character creator here, but we'll we'll talk about that in a moment here once the demo is done, I guess. No worries. Yeah. So you see, just by placing the the wrist, um, it fixes a lot of the issues. Uh, you can still go ahead and tweak a few things. So for example, the, the pinky finger, uh, we can just go ahead and click on that, make sure midpoint placement is on. This is the ideal uh, setting for placing kind of like tubular shapes like this. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, it's not it's not bad. It's just a little bit off on the pinky. Maybe this one as well. All right, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Just wanted to show you that you can totally tweak them as well. Um, it's not going to be perfect. All right, uh, the most important one is here, this one, the thumb, so that you can do a proper rotation of the thumb. So this one, you have to uh, align it in a couple of ways. So you can click on the actual dot and place it where you want it. So somewhere there. 
Um, and actually, if you click on the arrow, you actually can uh, rotate it. So I'm going to rotate this around. Um, yeah, I think somewhere there. In fact, let me just go ahead and switch back to the placement. I'm going to push it a bit up. Uh, this is the, the most important one, I think. What I found um, to be the most important one. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, I think this one is fine where it is. Might need to put it, yeah, need to put it a little bit closer inside. All right. So again, it's not going to be absolutely perfect. You just need to spend the time. But um, that unfortunately is the is the case with anything. Just the, the more time you spend on something, the the better it's going to look. But um, this is going to show you things uh, just fine. Alrighty, so now what I want to do is not include the hat into my bind post, but it is part of the mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and select everything but the hat. Um, and I'm going to click on Select Meshes, and I'm going to click on Bind Mesh. And this is going to basically create the, uh, it's going to create the, uh, what's it called? The, it's going to bind the skin to the, the skeleton. So um, once we have this done, uh, we can actually go ahead and tweak the, the weight painting if we, if we want to. But uh, for the most part, this is going to do a pretty good job. Um, you don't really have to do anything. Uh, one thing that I forgot to check was the, the toes. So they might not be perfect again. Um, this is the type of things that you can sort of like go back and forth and, and check. But um, yeah, it's, it's as simple as that. I, I would say that to summarize this whole step, uh, this whole process in three steps would be, once you have your character in Character Creator, is just uh, create the guides of the Accurate. So it's just about placing those dots, then create the skeleton, which is creating the bones. And then this third step, which is binding those uh, bones or binding the, the, the mesh that you created or your skin, your character into uh, the bones. That's it. That's the, the simplest way. It's a three-step uh, process. Once this is done, um, we will have our rig and we will be able to, to manipulate it. Perfect. So that's it. Um, you'll see that it is being uh, the rig is being created because we have uh, the green and the blue colors and the orange colors here in the skeleton. And I can go ahead and click on check animation. And we can go ahead and click on this drop down. If you don't see this as well, uh, this is in here. So that would be the animation player. And I'm going to click on this drop down and I'm going to go for a mail. I'm going to go for posing or sorry, walk. I'm going to click on walk. And there we go. I'm going to click play. That's it. We now have a fully functional rig that looks actually pretty good. The fingers and the hand are actually working great. Um, the shoes as well, or the, the feet. Yeah. And the, and the hat, you see, it is attached to the head. Now, um, let's go ahead and edit the, the hat because it might not be perfect. Um, and again, this is a, a process or something that you can use for anything that it is not like, like Kay mentioned, um, nothing attached to the actual uh, body of the character or like clothing. Um, and I think my, my camera froze. Uh, can you still hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you fine. You're just, your face is frozen at some point. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't okay. worry. It's not, it's not, it's not a bad look. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No worries. I'll just turn it off. Um, yeah, maybe maybe something to do with the uh, my my graphics card. Um, yeah, so like I said, the the hat in this case would be the same thing as if you have like say a, a sword or a gun or uh, something else that is not going to be attached to the actual body or like the cape, for example. Uh, it's going to be different. So I'm going to stop this right here, and I'm going to select. Uh, let's get out of the accurate. Now we have a fully functional rig. I'm going to click on accurate. All right, so we go back to this bind pose. Um, and I'm going to select the hat. Actually, let's select the body. I'm going to click on post just to edit the post. And I'm going to use the head here. And this is kind of like how I created the, the custom poses. So, all right. So I'm going to do something like this, try to find the issue. Um, it's actually, there's actually no issue. <laughs> so I was hoping to get something wrong with the, with the hat. Um, usually what happens is that if you have uh, an item that, you know, it's closer to another joint is going to uh, to spread the influence of these two joints. So uh, I was hoping to sort of like get, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's all it's it's all weighted to the top point there, so it's all just yeah. going to follow that top node. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Anyway, um, maybe I can show you uh, with with the hoodie because the hoodie is actually moving with that top joint. All right, so let's do that. Um, let's close this one right here. So um, the hat is fine. <laughs> so I'm going to select the clothing. Right. Uh, actually, it's not the clothing, the, the entire body, the, the top hierarchy. And I'm going to go to the edit. 
And I'm going to scroll down here. Uh, not the edit, sorry. This is called the uh, modifiers or attributes, sorry. Um, we're going to scroll down to where it says uh, weight painting or skin weights. And this allows you to paint the weights or the influence of each one of these joints, right? So I'm going to go, I mean, you if you know what to do, I think you can just click directly on the, on the joint if you press shift. Um, I think it's shift. I don't remember. But um, this is not what I use. I actually just click on, on the hierarchy and then go with my arrow key down until I see the, the effect, right? So here we go. All right. So I'm going to select the, uh, the clothes. And you see the, this area of the hoodie is being affected by the um, start from here. So it's been affected by the spine two. Um, it's also been affected by neck twist one, neck twist two, and the base head. And I think the base head is the one that is giving me the issues. So what I want to do is remove this from the head. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. Um, actually, I'm going to click on selection. And if I click on selection and I select these um, points right here, just to show you, uh, you'll see at the bottom, it tells you the different bones that these particular points are uh, weighted to. So uh, there's, a, there's a few here. Yeah, so I think the easiest way would be to just select um, a different bone. Maybe the neck twist or the spine. I think I'm going to stick with the, the spine so that if I rotate the head with the neck twist, it doesn't affect the, the hoodie. So here, let's go back into the paint, right? And I prefer to use the black and white color. I'm more old school like that. This is how I kind of like learned to do weight painting back in the days in in alias, uh, when Maya was alias. So I'm going to click on grayscale. And now you have a, a different preview of this. If the um, uh, bones are getting in the way, you can also turn them off like so. And if you don't want to see the, the wireframe, you can also toggle it off like so. All right. So with this in mind, in the spine too, I want to click on this icon to add uh, influence to that specific bone. I'm going to increase the strength a tiny bit and the radius to the maximum. Um, yeah, I think something like that. All right, and yeah, let's go ahead and just paint this. So you see now there's no any influence of the of the head in this area. That's pretty cool. And uh, let's go ahead and reduce the radius. And this is the part where you know you can spend a bit of time just making sure that this rig works fine. Um, it is a bit tedious, but there's no way around it. I mean, it did a pretty amazing job. Um, again, remember that this is um, a made-up topology. It's nothing to do with the topology that comes with CC4. So it does a pretty amazing job by um, getting it right for the first time. But you know, it's not going to beat the manual work that we're doing. So what I'm going to do is click on this icon right now to smooth things out a little bit, just in case I didn't do things correctly in some areas. And in fact, I'm going to turn off the body so I can see inside a bit. And I think this is from the jacket, but yeah, I think that works. All right. So anyway, this point is just to, to show you that you can totally um, adjust the weight painting and, and adjust the, the rig. Like I said, if you spend the time doing, the, doing this manually and you get a, a much more efficient uh, rig, then it's going to save you a lot of time uh, tweaking things in ZBrush. I personally just like the, the simplicity of this whole workflow of getting something that works. I do quick edits like this one that I just did and send it um, into ZBrush. And then I can just go ahead and tweak the, the pose and add wrinkles and uh, falls and all of that directly into ZBrush or like um, basically sculpting it. All right. So I'm going to click on skin weights just to get out of them. I'm going to go back to the binding pose. So the, when the, the way that you revert or revert back to the pose is by going in here or sorry, remove. And I'm going to go uh, restore bind pose. So now this is the pose that we use to bind this entire character. Perfect. So now that we have the rig, let's go ahead and, uh, well, I was going to send it to zero, but it's going to be the same pose that we have, isn't it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and create a new pose, right? And that's going to be very, very simple. Um, we can create the pose manually, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But I'm going to make use of the content that comes with CC4. So um, I'm going to go ahead and click on um, pose and open that up, go into mail pose. And in fact, let's go to motion. Uh, motion has the animation. So I'm going to open up the human mail. And I'm going to do the move. So let's do this. Um, let's do this walk. 
relaxed walk. So I'm going to drag and drop this in here. There we go. So we have a, a relaxed relax walk. I think it. I think this uh, walk suits the, the Spider-Man with the hat. <laughs> so um, I'm going to use this one to, to show you the first pose. And then we do uh, something a bit more interesting, more dynamic for potentially a, a render that we can do. All right. So if we like this one, we just need to stop at the frame that we like for this animation, right? And there's a ton of different content that, that you can get. Uh, this is kind of like the default one, but you can also download this pack that has uh, a bunch of them. Um, I'll cover this after. But basically, we now have a pose based on the current frame that we have. And all we have to do now is, um, I mean, you can go ahead and select everything and send it back to ZBrush. Or you can just go ahead and use the uh, the plugin here, uh, which is called the ZBrush Post Links. So this is a plugin as well that you can download from the Revolution page. And But this is a plugin not for ZBrush. It's a plugin for CC4. So you need to have CC4, obviously. Uh, but this is the plugin that allows you to communicate or, or send things, um, these poses, into, uh, into ZBrush, into the post tools. right? So um, I'm going to use this one because I already have it, and it's pretty easy. So you see that by default, um, I think this one would be like this. So if you go to the post tools, by default, this is not going to be uh, ticked on. But um, I like to match. If you remember, when I brought things into CC4, I asked um, the software to scale things to match whatever, whatever is the, the ideal scale for the accurate. So I'm going to do the same thing when I send it back to Zbrush. I'm going to match the Zbrush um, scale here, this one right here. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Send Current Post Tool uh, to Zbrush Post Tools. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm just going to let it do its thing. All right. So now we are in ZBrush in our working file. And it's going through every single subtool and is basically adjusting it. So this is going to be, again, the, the same idea of uh, creating a new layer for this specific tool. And it preserves the, the other poses that we have or that we did manually in ZBrush. I'm just going to go ahead and wait until it finishes. There we go. So um, this one right here is the pose. Uh, let's go click on the body. I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, rename it. So I'm going to call this one relax pose. All right. So now we have our pose. And it's just going through the process of renaming every single layer of every single uh, subtool or the visible one. Perfect. So if I select the body and go to the layers, you see we have the relax pose in here. Awesome. So now what I like to do is actually bring in, um, actually, we can click on this one and we go back to the uh, to the previous pose, so like to the, um, the bind pose. Uh, but you see we have this T pose and this A pose. Um, these ones are really cool if you are working on uh, something for an animation for a specific engine that requires the, the rig of the character in a specific way. Uh, I don't really use them, but I'm going to show you that you can send them to ZBrush if you want them. Uh, to edit those poses in here. So in ZBrush, what you can do is click on the plugin and send the A post to the T, uh, sorry, the T post and the A post to ZBrush post tools. And that should, um, let me just check. That should add those poses to those specific ones, uh, to those specific switches. Um, sorry, <laughs> it's, there, there we go. All right, so now we, you see we have the T pose. That's the, the first one. And then it's going to create an A pose that is slightly different from the uh, the bind pose that I use, especially around the hands. If you pay attention to the hands, um, it has the, the fingers kind of like straighten out. That's why I don't really like to use these poses. I, I, I prefer a custom sort of A pose that is a bit more relaxed. So I have more of a, an in-between, um, you know, the fully flexed and fully extended uh, limbs. Uh, but anyway, we have now these three layers with these three poses. All right, uh, so what I'm going to do is I click on the relax pose or walking. Perfect. Um, and if I want to, I can actually remove this. Um, this is something that I like to do. This is a personal thing. Uh, I'm going to click on restored bind pose. And this is something that I like to do just in case, uh, but you don't have to. I, I like to send this as a pose into my tool. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Send current post tools to the post tool. And that basically is going to create another post that just has this um, kind of like default bind post that I use. Uh, the only reason I do this is not because 
like any, like I said, it doesn't have anything to do with the workflow. It's just a personal thing um, that I like to have that as my own uh, layer in case I want to go back to um, to fix something in that specific post for doing another binding. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's just a yeah, it's just a personal thing. You don't have to do this. So now I have this, and I'm going to call this my bind. All right, and keep in mind that the more subtools that you have, uh, the longer it's going to take because it's going to go through absolutely everything. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and create something a bit more interesting, and we can just kind of like manage our, our poses in here, and I'll show you how you can edit them as well. So I'm gonna start with um, I'm gonna maybe hide the hat for a bit, <laughs> and I'm gonna use the edit pose on the modify tab. Uh, whoops, let me select the body. Edit post. So we have this window that allows us to manipulate things in here uh, a bit more manually. So this is what I like to use to create those sort of uh, custom poses uh, that I just show you. Uh, let me just check my notes, make sure that everything so far is what I want to cover. So sending poses, we're going to, yep. All right. So we're going to do this and then edit those poses. All right. So here we can also turn this on and off to see or visualize some things. So I think I'm going to remove that so that I can just select the body or the uh, the bone here and then edit it. So I'm going to start with the hips and just push it forward like so. There we go. I always, uh, when, it, when it comes to animation, um, I always start with the hips just to place this uh, properly. Um, I That's kind of like what I, that, what I studied uh, at uni, like 3D animation. So um, I did a lot of animating and, and moving parts uh, when I was in, in at uni. Uh, I used to have a, a teacher, actually, that, that used to say that the, the ass is the center of the universe. Um, yeah, and, and she was a, a, an incredible animator. Um, but she used to say that, that you know, every type of movement that you're doing in a humanoid character or a human character should start from the hips. That's why, and that's why I'm doing it this way. And it's kind of like something that sort of stuck with me. All right, so I'm going to make a more dynamic pose. Uh, maybe I'm not entirely sure what I'm going for. Maybe kind of like a massive jump. Anything that showcases the, the versatility of the rig. Maybe push this forward a bit, this one as well. So this is the, the time that, um, you know, maybe if there is a, a question, Kai, about, um, you know, Anything about this workflow, uh, I'll be happy to answer that as I play around with this pose because you know it's a bit tedious to just uh, see me <laughs> moving this around. Yeah, absolutely. I'll answer a couple of questions here uh, relating to um, reillusion stuff here as we move, as we move along, and I'll save mm -hmm. the the technical ZBrush stuff for uh, Pablo in, in, in a moment here. Uh, we've got a question from an anonymous attendee talking about here. Um, it's actually some pretty good feedback. I know that this. Um, for a lot of Reillusion users, character creator users, I know ZBrush can be a little bit overwhelming. It's like, you know, jumping into Maya or something like that. So we have an anonymous attendee here just kind of mentioning that, uh, you know, it's a little, the, all, the, all the ZBrush sub tools and all that stuff can be a little overwhelming for uh, character creator characters. Um, and uh, no worries about that. You know, if you, if uh, it's, it's a, a tool that may be foreign to some of our users for sure. Um, myself, I'm definitely uh, pretty dumb when it comes to ZBrush. Um, I remember taking a couple of college courses and then, uh, uh, but yeah, this, people can create some awesome stuff with it. Um, like I said, it can be some overwhelming and we will have lots of other tutorials and webinars in the future that are a bit more, uh, you know, basic and stuff. Um, now, Anonymous also linked a, uh, I can't copy and paste this, I don't think from the, uh, oh, I can't, okay. Um, a master class from Daz. Uh, just talking about, um, you know, starting from the very beginning and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, well, definitely um, any any feedback you guys have about, you know, the the difficulty levels or whatever, whatever you want to learn about more. I know we have a lot of pro users um, from all levels. So whatever you want to learn about more, uh, any software you want to learn about, um, put that in the feedback form for us. And we'll, def we'll definitely uh, try to get as many, um, you know, guest speakers in as we can, as many... Um, you know, pros in to do their stuff and, and also some of the basic stuff as well. Um, so yeah, just uh, check back all the time and, and don't forget to use the feedback uh, to send to us because, uh, you know, we're always happy to 
explore different options in terms of uh, topics and whatnot. Um, we're going to try and get some uh, some animated stuff in uh, a little bit in the future here, um, especially with some motion capture, which will be really fun because we've had a lot of demand for that. But uh, um, I'll go to the next one here from uh, Doug here. Um, so this is a question. I'm not really familiar with proxy pose myself. Uh, maybe you can uh, take this one while you're kind of posing your dude there, uh, Pablo. He, Doug mentions, Doug Bowman mentions, uh, I'm wondering how does all of this interact with the proxy, uh, proxy pose tools that were recently added in ZBrush 2023? Um, have you been able to... Um, right. The proxy tools are, yeah, like it works just fine. It works exactly in the same way. Uh, just like with the workflow that I show you with the, um, what's the name, <laughs> the transpose master, you can do the same thing. You can enable proxy pose. Uh, if you have just a Dynamesh object uh, and then send it to a transpose master. And that basically does the same thing. So you can just create the pose in there, uh, send it back into a, into, not into a layer, but, um, you know, send it back to the, to the proxy tool. Um, and that way you have your pose based on the proxy tool. Now I don't use that uh, really, or I haven't used it much uh, to be honest, because that is something that I would use if I'm working on a kind of like in a sculptural creature, something that is more just a sculpture um, purely because it is a, a really awesome tool to, um, to create poses for something that is more of a, a asymmetrical character maybe. Whereas this one is just, the ability to to move your character in multiple poses like I'm doing here uh, is just it's just a different workflow I think so I think the proxy tool is geared towards more sculptures that want to create a, a a concept sculpt if that makes sense uh, yeah, but, yeah yeah no yeah, I cool. think that covered, that about covers it um yeah I, again I can't, I'm not really super super familiar with proxy tools but I get what you're saying I think uh you know, with uh, with the um, pose tools here for biped characters that are you know easy to rig up just with accurate and stuff, it definitely uh, speeds up the workflow. Yeah, um, for sure. I, I got a question here from Frank uh, asking, "Does this work with ZBrush 2022?" Uh, yes, it does, Frank. I think Pablo, you're using 2022, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the the reason I'm I'm still using 2022 uh, just to show <laughs> you that it still works uh, quite well with 2022. So yeah. Gotcha. And I, I know people have questions about which versions it works with. So I'm going to put a uh, link in the chat there for you guys. Um, if you check out this link, this is where you can download all the free stuff. This link I just put in the chat and right below each download link, it tells you which versions it's compatible with. So that can be your reference for, you know, what's compatible with what. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll move on to the next question here from Jason uh, asks, can CC4 work with reverse jointed and quadruped characters? So right now we're kind of working on that, especially with quadruped characters, uh, the reverse jointed characters that might be, I'm not sure if that's being included in the next update or not. It's going to be included in the future though, because we, we do have plans for obviously quadruped and reverse jointed, because that's been a, a demand for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, 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 that's on the, on the playlist. Um, again, it should be, I think either late this year, early next year. But uh, you can look forward to that within the within the current version of uh, Character Creator. So um, that's to answer your question there, Jason. Um, I think uh, are you are you done with the pose there? Do you want to? Yeah, yeah. I or? just I just want to okay. show a couple more things. Um, um, sure, yeah, go because, for it. Yeah, I, I got um I gotta go in half an hour, <laughs> so I want to cover <laughs> everything else. So yeah, sure. this is just a more dynamic pose. Again, I'm using the the three D mouse, so that's why I can. You know, this is part of the. The creative process, you also have to play around with these things. So I like to, um, you know, <laughs> play around with the pose. But this is the, the dynamic pose that, that I want to go for. Obviously, there are a few things that uh, I want to tweak. But the main thing that I want to show you is that look at the zipper. So the zipper is a little bit stretched and there's some gaps in it. That is why I wanted to, to cover this because this is the type of assets that I would actually add after I've, I'm done with the with the pose. And I can use just a, an IMM brush just to add it in there. But that is just to say that, um, you know, the, char the character creator, Accurate, actually did a pretty amazing job uh, maintaining roughly the the whole volume of the of the zipper so I'm pretty happy with this like I said this is the type of assets that I, I will change anyway in ZBrush uh, but yeah so there you go now there's a bit of stretching here and this all all these areas this is the type of thing that I would add or fix in ZBrush maybe the intersection here although in this case it's uh, you know it's not that 
um, that bad anyway. Uh, but yeah, so one thing that I want to show you here is that um, character creator actually come with some pre-made poses and gestures for the hands. So this hand, um, let's assume that this character or uh, Spider-Man is sort of like holding uh, one of the spider webs. So I'm going to use uh, this fist A, drag and drop it in here. And this is for the right hand side. So I'm going to use right hand. And now we have uh, the fist in there. And of course, we can go ahead and edit that if we want to. So um, not this one, this one. And maybe make the, the index finger be a bit more open. Again, uh, these are all the tweaks that, that you can do. And of course, um, if the if the rig is not perfect, and this is honestly because of the low resolution mesh I have, I don't have enough loops uh, to describe a nice volume here. Um, let me just show you why. So if you click on this um, icon right here, you can see the um, yeah the polygons. Um, this is not Reolution fault. This is just my, my fault uh, because I didn't have uh, enough loops here. So for the fingers, if you want a, a better deformation, and that goes for any type of joint um, or rotation of the, of the body, um, if you want to have a better distribution of the volume or maintaining the volume, you need more, um, more loops around here. So that's why this one looks a little bit crooked. Uh, but again, it's something that um, either if I fix before I send it now that I know that I need more resolution, or I can just go ahead and do it in ZBrush uh, just by sculpting it. I already have like the base of that, um, yeah, of that pose. So that's all good. Uh, let me just go back. So now I'm happy with this. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on the hat because we have it <laughs> in there. And I'm going to go to plugins and I'm going to send this pose to the C tools. All righty. And, and honestly, this is kind of like the, the the workflow that I used to create multiple poses. And that's what I did. Um, like I showed you before, I created a bunch of different poses uh, because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use for the illustration that I show you. Uh, and this is the this is the simplicity of the workflow. Once you have the rig, you can just um, you know save your project, which is something else that I want to cover in just a second. Um, you can save your project, and then you can open it up and create more and more tools. Uh, sorry, more and more uh, poses. So all right, so we have this now. Um, this cool pose in ZBrush. Again, I spent a lot of, waste a lot of time <laughs> doing this, but now we have a nice pose. I'm going to turn off the hat. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to rename it to, uh, let's click on rename, cool pose. Okay. Um, hang on. All righty. So I'm going to turn off the hat. We don't need that in there. It was This was just for demo purposes. Um, so what I want to do now is maybe send everything to the lowest subdivision level. Uh, by the way, you have these tools uh, within ZBrush, the all low and all high, uh, all of that it is in here. So you can, um, sorry, not here, in here, in the plugin. So you can send everything to the lowest subdivision or the highest subdivision. You can go uh, one by one, one level, so one level of subdivision lower or higher. And that's uh, the same thing that you'll find here in the geometry palette, uh, low res and high res. Um, and just a, a quick, um, I'm just going to branch out very quickly with something that uh, Kai mentioned about being a very overwhelming and Seabrush being really, really, um, you know, having a, a very hard uh, learning curve. If you actually are interested in learning Seabrush and, you know, getting uh, a little bit deeper into this workflow between Seabrush and CC4, um, I have a course that is absolutely you know, it's dedicated for beginners, really. So I'm just going to show you this because it is relevant to what um, Kai mentioned really quickly. So if you go to the character, uh, sorry, the 3D concept artist, uh, and you go to courses, there is a course called the UCG or the Ultimate ZBrush Guide course. This one right here, the Ultimate ZBrush Guide course. Um, it is uh, a course that is dedicated for absolute beginners. And again, I start from scratch. I, I actually talk about how ZBrush was created, like from the papers in Seagraph back in, in the 90s and things like that to understand how everything was made. And I cover everything bit by bit with the, um, the UI and all of that. So uh, if you're interested, you can just go ahead and check it out. Um, it has all the modules in here and then you can join. This is a course that is currently open. So if you wanna uh, join, by all means, go ahead and do that. Um, also, if you don't wanna, if you're not entirely sure about this course just yet, you can go ahead and click, uh, let's go back to the 3D concept artist. You can click on this start here. And this is a, pi a page in my website that I created so that you kind of like know uh, what are the steps that you can follow to get into the 3D. So you can start here, 
by you know understanding understanding a little bit more what the three concept um, job is, so like create, creating concepts in 3D, and then you can go ahead and do these workshops that are free. So if you're interested in 3D tools, you can just do that. Otherwise, you can join the course right now. Um, in fact, I think some of the the students of the UCG are here in this webinar. So um, if you join the Discord channel or Discord server that I have, uh, you can ask questions to the current students, and they will tell you. Uh, what to do. Uh, this one is also free. So you can go through all of these process until you get to the end. And it's kind of like progressively uh, taking you through the entire um, steps. But anyway, so that's just because it is related to what Kai mentioned. And it is a course that is open right now. So if you're interested in ZBrush, um, again, from a very, very uh, beginner's perspective, by all means, you can go ahead and do that. Alrighty. So now I'm going to go ahead and edit this post because like I said, there's some intersections here, something that uh, doesn't really work. Uh, for me, like the, the stretching here of the pictorial area, all of that. So the way that that works, again, in the more manual process that I used to do was to, you know, go to every single subtool, open up the layers, um, click on edit or record that post again, tweak it, stop the, the, the recording, all of that. So very tedious manual process. So this uh, plugin takes care of all of that as well. So uh, I'm going to make sure that, well, if you want to edit this post, you need to make sure that that's the one that you have enabled. So we're, we're fine there. And I'm going to click on edit current post. So again, this is going to automate that process of enabling the recording for that particular layer that has this post. And again, we can use uh, all the subdivision levels and all of that to, to edit it. So I'm going to use uh, the move topological. So M, uh, by the way, the, the shortcuts to access this type of brushes. If you press the letter B, it access the entire palette. Then you can filter by letter. So I'm going to filter by letter M. And then I'm going to select the topological with T. So B, M, T. All right. And also, let's go ahead and select this. And I'm going to turn on the polyframe so that you can see roughly what this is. And I'm going to start um, doing these little tweaks. I'm also going to use the smooth brush to smooth this out. Uh, there's a little bit of a stretching of the, um, of the texture, but that's not a big deal. All right. So this is another process that it just takes time, and there's no all the way around it. So I'm just going to do this something, you know, something quickly. Uh, you can also hold um, Control and Shift to isolate things. I'm just going to do an auto group uh, to hide this. And that way, um, it's probably a little bit easier to, to work like that. So you have polygroups or uh, group IDs or, or object IDs. It's going to be a lot easier. And let's go ahead and smooth out this transition as well so that there is more tension here, like the arm is pulling all of this a bit more. All right, let me just fix this one. So um, just a tiny edit in there. Uh, again, we can go ahead and edit the, the hand um, as well. That's going to take a little bit more time, but you know, just going to show you what I would do. So in the lowest subdivision level, that's the one that allows you to have a bit more control on, on the volumes and setting up the blocking. You can totally do that. Um, I'm just going to fix the, maybe the, the pinky finger. So you see, um, I'm trying to maintain the volume for the most part. Oops. But because this is a, a very time consuming task and very repetitive, I'll just do this bit. And you know, it's the same thing for the rest. Maybe a bit more here. All right. So that's cool. I'm going to also uh, use the, the smooth brush to, to soften a little bit of this uh, twisting effect of the arm. Again, you can totally do this uh, with the, um, I'm going to change to another brush, by the way. So I'm going to use the move brush. Uh, with accu curve so um, this is something that you can also tweak from the um, weight painting so you can edit the weight painting of the of the twisting of the arm uh, but i think it that it does a pretty good job by default and i think maybe uh, we can push the let's go ahead and select this uh, just the just the uh, what's the name <laughs> the jacket let's select that and mask it invert the mask and i can just push this back a bit so that we see more of the of the hoodie. All right, I'm not going to spend too much time in here editing. As you can see, it is more of the same, just little tweaks and nudges with the move brush. Um, 
but it sort of like gives you the idea of what this is all about. Um, now, just to, to have some fun uh, with this pose, and this is again what I would do more manually, I'm gonna go to the high subdivision level. I'm also going to turn off my texture just temporarily and also turn off um, all the poly paint. So I can see just kind of like the sculptural part of it. So you see, we have these bits in here. And for all of this stretching and you know the, the wrinkles that would probably form around this area, I'm gonna use a custom brush. So I'm gonna go to the brushes and let's go to my brushes. I'm gonna open up these cloth and drapery brushes. And I'm gonna use this one to create some compression folds. Uh, not this one, sorry. A compression override, this one. Um, and like I mentioned, these brushes are like little packs that I sometimes create. Uh, so you can find those in the in the Seabrush Guides store or in the Seabrush Guides, just go to the seabrushguides.store. Um, you can go to brushes. The ones that I'm currently using um, are these ones right here, just so you know, the uh, the cloth and drapery brushes, right? So you can just uh, search from, from there. Uh, so this is basically what this brush does. It just simplifies the process of adding this type of wrinkles. So I'm just going to add some compression folds in here. There's some intersection, but it's not visible anyway. So I'm just going to try to create uh, that compression fold, but also that um, you know it creates the the effect that things are being pushed in. All right, so we need some some compression here, uh, but then something a bit more stretchy around here. And this is what I like about this process. I can get my, my base um, sculpt or my base uh, layers in the pose or get a pose really um, with Character Creator. And then I can use any sculpting brushes just to, uh, to work on my pose. And I'm doing this very quickly just to show you um, what you can do. But you know, if you spend the time and you actually look at references, not just winging it like I'm doing here. Uh, you can get something that is pretty convincing. All right, um, that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and clear my mask, get out of solo mode, and we can bring in my texture back. And yeah, so I'm happy with this bro uh, with this pose. And again, you can just spend a little bit more time working on all these um, tweaks and all of that. Maybe the intersections here. I'm gonna use uh, the the move brush. Uh, actually, the move topological is a little bit easier, so that it recognizes the continuity of the of the polygons. All right, something like that. So once you're happy with the edit of your pose, and this is where I will spend um, most of the time after I have my pose, just figuring out you know everything that has to do with the pose that um, everything works and i'm going to go ahead and click on save current record so this is the equivalent to um, clicking the the record button or stopping the record button in each one of the layers for each one of the subtools and yeah so that's it it's just basically saving all the edits that you did on all of your tools and let's go back into the body all right so now we have that edit pose with the cool pose and we have all the um, you know, the stretching and all the, the folds and everything. So it's working really well. And that's about it in terms of the workflow. I just want to wrap it up with uh, something else that I think is really, really powerful. Um, and also showing you how you can save this because it will be frustrating if you uh, save your project, you spend all of this time and then you try to, um, you know, bring back everything else and it doesn't, it doesn't work. So I'm going to show you how to do that with my final um you know, project. Uh, so what I want, the first thing that I want to show you to wrap it up is that you can edit things with um, with layers, but it doesn't have to be a, a layer for a pose. So for example, let's go ahead and um, I'm going to open up the layers here and I'm going to select my, my body. So you have all of these layers or all of these yeah, sculpting layers that are ultimately poses. So I'm going to click on the cool pose just to get out of it. All right, and you see we go back to the to the bind pose, um, which is the same thing that I have here as bind. Like I said, this is just a personal thing; you don't have to do that. Um, and I'm gonna go to the body. I'm gonna go to the lowest of the actually before I go to the lowest of division level. I'm gonna do this manually. I'm gonna create a new recording layer just to show you. You can still do this the the usual workflow in ZBrush. All right, so this is a new recording layer just for the body. It's not going to be available in you know um, other subtools. And I'm gonna go to the lowest of division level. 
and we can do something else. Maybe you know what? Let's make this um, Spider-Man a little bit more cartoonish. So I'm gonna make a super head. So just masking the body except the the head, and I'm gonna go ahead and scale it up quite a bit. Cool. So we have this <laughs> cartoon Spider-Man in just this uh, layer. So go back to the high subdivision level. And I'm going to stop recording this layer. And I'm going to call this one um, Big Head. All right. So that means that um, this layer, this Big Head layer, is not in the poses, uh, but it's just an additional layer that I can add or I can modify it, um, as a general rule for all the poses. So this is the cool thing. I can just go ahead and click on Relax Pose. And we still have the massive head. Obviously, it doesn't fit um, the, the hat anymore. But we have the big head in the pose as well. So if I switch to the cool pose now, we're still going to have that, um, that unique layer that is not part of the poses. Um, and this is kind of like what I found this, uh, about this workflow to be so good. Um, you can edit things really, really quickly. And it saves things like uh, independently. So you see the, the actual uh, placement of the head uh, it is dictated by the poses or the other layers. Um, and it kind of like works with a hierarchy as well. So it looks at these poses and say, okay, this is the pose for this character. But then I also have this um, other cool pose with the big head. So I can just go ahead and do this, right? And then you can do the same thing. I would, um, I would advise that you change things from the bind pose, but it doesn't really make a difference. You can just go ahead and do um, things separately or in this pose. And if you do separate layers, um, you can just send them in here. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can create a new layer here, change the pose, and then you can bring that uh, layer as a pose in here. Um, probably, I'm not going to do that because uh, there's no real point for, for the big head. The big head is not a pose. Um, but you can basically just go ahead and click on all layers or hidden layers and create um, a pose based on that. So if I go ahead and um, let me just think what would be the best way to show you that. All right, I'm going to destroy things a little bit, but that's just to show you something. So I'm going to enable all the poses. That's going to really break things up. All right, so these are, um, this is the Spider-Man with all the poses enabled. I'm going to turn off the big head, right? And I'll do the same thing with this one. Oh, actually, this one doesn't really matter. All right, so what I'll do is I'm going to click on um, hidden layers. So this is the only one that I have hidden. And I can go ahead and click on Convert Layers to Pose. So it's going to take that hidden layer of that uh, body, and it's going to send it in here as its own uh, layer. It doesn't really make sense um, to have it as a pose. Like I said, it's just a big head um, on, a, on a layer. So I'll probably won't use it. This is kind of like breaking things too much. But just to show you that you could do it if you, know, if you make it um, something that is a bit more coherent. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so it's going to be the 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 hidden pose that is going to be added here. Hopefully. <laughs> Let's just wait a, a, a little bit. Now it's going through all the, the layers. So I think it basically behind the scenes, what it does is analyzes first everything that is not hidden um, and then just, but it has to read through all of them and then decide which one is the one that is hidden to, to add it to the, to the plugin or to the, to the manager. That's what it is really, it's just a, a way to managing your posts. All right, so you see that is now in here. So here is the big head with a switch. Um, yeah, that's it. So you can just go ahead and click on big head. And you'll see it's just going to make the, the big head of Spider-Man on. Uh, but now this is a pose, right? Rather than something that you can toggle on and off. So if you want to remove it, actually, you can just go ahead and delete it. Um, delete this current pose or the data of that uh, selected pose. Uh, but if I delete it, then um, I don't, I don't want to have it I don't want to remove it because I think it's a cool uh, looking big head <laughs> and I think it works for the other poses. So yeah, hopefully this covers um, the, the whole workflow. And like I said, to wrap it up, I'm going to show you how you can save this uh, so you can you know, have it with you. Um, and also, you know, the, the CC4, it's pretty straightforward. You can just go ahead and save as a project and just call it whatever you want. Um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and open up a recent project. So um, Let's go ahead and open up. All right, so I'm going to open up uh, the, the final project that I created for this Spider-Man in CC4. 
And while that one is working, I'm also going to, uh, I'm not going to save all of this. This is just for, for demo purposes anyway. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reinitialize ZBrush. So basically a clean version of ZBrush now. And that will hopefully show you the, not the issue, but something to keep in mind um, when you're creating this, when, you, when you're working with this workflow really. All right, so if I go ahead and open, um, again, I don't have anything, any tool or anything like that, um, but you see in the ZBrush post tool, I still have these, uh, these poses, right? And even though I don't have anything, so if I click on this one, it's going to say, okay, there's an error here. There's nothing related to this. So what I, what I wanna do is click on refresh post list. And when, when I load something and it's going to refresh uh, things. So I'm gonna open up the final version with all my poses. and click and drag. All right, so this is the, the one that I have with all my subtools. Let me just check the, the body. Uh, by the way, this star, for those of you who are not like ZBrush users, uh, this star that I have here is just because ZBrush will rename my, my, my files based on whatever I have here at the beginning or at the first, what the first subtool is. So um, I always have this, uh, or it could be anything really. And that way it just renames the file based on that. So this one is called Spidey's your four poses. Um, but yeah, it's just so that it doesn't rename the, the actual files, uh, which by the way, is a very important thing. So if you want to try to reconnect things with um, CC4 uh, with you know these, with, with different names is not going to find the, the connection. So make sure that the names are not changing. Um, all right, so let's say layers. So we have all the layers here, but they're, they don't match any of these. So I'm going to click on refresh post list. And this process is going to go through the process again to analyze all the poses and bring them in here. Perfect. So this is where I have all of my cool poses that I did for the, you know, I can just click on this one and we have the, the walk cycle. We have the hero landing, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so you see, you can save your, um, your C tool. You don't have to save a project. You can save your C tool. And every time that you bring it in, all you have to do is click on refresh post list so that um, the plugin actually analyzes the, the different layers you have, and then you can have um, you know, all your poses back in here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is show you the final bit, which is the connection. So now I have my, my file in here. By the way, something else cool that you can do is, um, let's go to thing, custom, I'm gonna go to lights. Um, I'm gonna drag and drop a more, a cooler set of lights. There we go. So you can uh, tweak your lights that's within the scene. Uh, nothing, nothing to do with the, um, with the workflow that I'm showing you, but you can just go ahead and tweak the lights here. So if I select, uh, let's say the, the key light uh, here in the attributes, I can change the color of that. So like I said, you can do the, the render straight from uh, CC4 and you know, it has all the, uh, the maps, like I said. So if I select my, uh, sorry, prop character pose body, and go to the textures. You see, I have all the textures that I created in uh, Substance 3 Painter. So you have the normal. Uh, I think this one is only 1,024. So it's a pretty small um, image, but you know you can go for larger ones. And you have all the details. Uh, added a little bit of um, you know leather to the to the shoes. It's not perfect. Again, it's just a, a quick sketch. And I knew uh, I didn't want to spend too much time on the textures because I knew I was going to do a paint over to create a, that stylized version. Uh, and anyway, uh, let's go ahead and create another pose really quickly based on what we have in here. So I'm going to go to um, motion. Uh, I'm actually going to use something from the pack. So let's, let's see, let's try this full body motion and drag and drop it. And let's play around this thing. So this is kind of like to test the, the rig, actually. It's a pretty good one. Uh, I'm going to change that to something else, though, this dance one. We can make the Spider-Man dance. All right, this one is pretty cool. So what I'll do is I'm going to send this one. So plugins, ZBrush tools, uh, send current post. And just before I do that, I'm going to show you something else. So look at the names here on my, on my character or my file here. Again, this is a new file. And this is also a new file after I initialize ZBrush, but it matches the names. So I'll just do that. And let's just wait until it finishes. Perfect. So now we have another pose here. It's called pose one. Um, and that's about it. That's a wrap. Uh, I don't know if you, um, 
if you have any questions about this process, but um, yeah, I'm happy to just answer some questions uh, before I jump out. Cool, yeah, I think I basically answered most of the questions in the background uh, while you were talking there. I know you have to leave uh, pretty quick here. So, but uh, yeah, for anyone, who, if I didn't answer your questions, um, there's a couple of links I put in the chat window. Um, there's a first one here that um, basically is our ZBrush. I'm just gonna, sh can I, do you mind if I share my screen, uh, Pablo? Yeah, yeah, by all means. Real quick? Okay, all righty. Let me just uh, share my screen real quick here. So for those of you, I, I've got a couple of questions about educational licensing. So we do have academic discounts and I put this link, this is the last link I just put in the chat window. Uh, this was, I believe Doug Bowman had asked me this question. So um, yeah, you can definitely check out this link, 60% um, off for individual licenses, multi-seat licenses, everything like that. Um, so this is all set here. That link is in the chat window. And the one that we just put before that, um, for the basic stuff, this is the um, from our learning center. So if you go into our learning center, this is where you can find all of the uh, the pose tools and pose link stuff uh, for ZBrush. These are some of the tutorials that I dubbed over, um, and that's also in the chat window there as well. So this is yeah, this is the beginner stuff like getting installed, getting started, um, the base, the very very basic stuff. Um, again. Uh, yeah, this is for, for the, you know, for the beginners there who want to get started on it and maybe uh, mess around a little bit. Um, so check out these links here as well. I think that um, is the only links that I put in there. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I think that's it. And then Ele Eleonora uh, was very nice enough for, uh, to post the link again to your 3D, 3D concept artist uh, page there. Um, awesome. We had a couple of questions about, you know, where I can get to that again. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that about covers it. Um, uh, thank you so much, Pablo, for being with us. For uh, that's pretty much a record, a uh, record demo there. That's like a two-hour demo. That's uh, I think I think I probably broke the record there. But uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry to, to take so long. <laughs> oh no worries, no worries. Uh, thanks so much for sharing your expertise. I'm I'm sure everyone here really appreciated it and learned a lot. And again, this is on YouTube as well, so you guys can rewatch it anytime. Um, and uh, we're gonna provide you guys with the links. Uh, to through email, so make sure, make sure you uh, check out the links, build the feedback form, get the discount from the content store, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, um anything, sorry, so anything? just sorry to yeah one one last thing that I wanted to to cover. I don't know if we have like two minutes uh, sure, because yeah. I think you know this is obviously geared towards uh, you know three D artists and and some people that want to actually do poses in ZBrush and that sort of thing. But um, I just wanted to cover something really quickly. If you, uh, let me just share my screen once again, um, which is something that you can do in ZBrush, but I think it's something for more like um, illustrators. So let me just show you this very, very quick. All right, so um, these are BPR filters from ZBrush. So after I had my, my poses here, I did a bunch of sketches. Uh, so let me just show you that one here. So all of these are obviously from the poses that I created with CC4 and ZBrush. And all of these renders that look kind of like a blue pencil sketch um, are some filters that I created in ZBrush. So you also have the ability to do that. And I do have tutorials on how to achieve this sort of like comic style look. Uh, but basically, yeah, this is like all in ZBrush. I can go ahead and switch to a different pose. Let's say the big jump, um, which is the one that I use for my final render and then just go ahead and render this out. And then after the render, all of these filters are going to be applied. So it looks kind of like a sketchy thing. And then you can just go ahead and use other things, for example, um, very quickly. So these are some sets that you can find in the uh, in the ZBrush Guide store as well. So I can double click one and you'll see it just changes the, the look and feel of the, of the render. Oh, uh, cool. But yeah, just wanted to to cover that because this could be something else that, you know, if you're more into illustration than anything else, or even if you're a 3D artist and just want to play around with illustration, you can totally do these type of things um, and then just take a screenshot and then just, you know, continue painting on top um, and all of that. So that's just, you know, something slightly different, um, just so you know which ones I'm talking about are these filters. These ones right oh, that's here. Awesome. So you can, we, 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 we can have a webinar on that alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's just a, a you know simple set of packs that um, works on top of the render. So you can just go ahead and um, you know click on that and just read about it. So all of these uh, sort of like sketchy illustration looks um, from a, any 3D mesh. It doesn't have to be um, a humanoid character. It could be absolutely anything. It just takes uh, whatever is in ZBrush and turns it into uh, like a sketchy pencil 
um, sort of sketch. So it would be cool uh, to utilize or to combine this workflow uh, like I did here with the, with the Spider-Man and all your poses. So you can create a comic, right? So you have a bunch of different uh, poses that you create in CC4 and then just render everything in ZBrush in that way. And obviously you can add the, the speech bubbles and all that uh, cool stuff within um, you know, Photoshop or something. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to cover that in case you wanna explore a different thing. That is so cool. Way to go out with a bang. That's that's really <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, all right, yeah, I think that that about covers it. Um, thank you again so much, Pablo, for taking your time all the way from uh, down in uh, frigid Australia, apparently. Yep. <laughs> and uh, thank you, thank you everyone here for uh, being with us today. Uh, so such a pleasure to have you guys all here. And uh, anything you want to add, Pablo? No, that's that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for having it, uh, for having me here, and everyone else that um, that joined the webinar. Um, hopefully, uh, I cover everything that you were, you know, interested in knowing. Uh, if not, uh, feel free to just uh, message me or email me. Um, probably, I'm actually gonna send um, a link to my Discord channel, so you can just join my Discord. Um, if I don't answer straight away, a lot of my students and you know people that are already working in the industry that did my course at some point and knows my workflow uh, will be able to to help you out if I cannot you know answer straight away. But yeah, thanks for having me, and that's it for me. Awesome. Thanks so much, Pablo. And thanks again, everyone. I think we'll sign off for now. So we'll see you guys again in the next webinar. Adios, guys. See ya. Bye.